It was a Dr. Phil Tuesday on The Oprah Show when we brought feuding mothers and their adult daughters together. These daughters felt ignored, abandoned, betrayed by their mothers, and Dr. Phil brought more than a touch of his tell it like it is to get to the real deal. Phil McGraw is back today. He's unleashed this year. Uh, tell it like it is, Phil is here. And we're talking today about the person that you're supposed to be able to trust the most, the person who's there to protect you, care for you, and love you. But my guests say that they have suffered what they believe to be the ultimate betrayal by their mothers. My guests wrote to Dr. Phil. Uh, they know who he is and that he does tell it like it is for help. So obviously they are here because they want the truth to be said today. And as I said, Phil is unleashed, so... Um, a lot of people may not like what he has to say. For eight years, Pam was molested by her stepfather. She has never gotten over what her mother did after her stepfather was caught. I've been angry at my mom since I can remember. It's been a lot of years expecting her, I guess, to rescue me. My earliest memory of my stepfather molesting me was as a young child. My sister and I shared a room and he would come in and choose, I guess, whichever one of us he was gonna be with. He would touch me in the lower area. I can't even say. And it was horrible. I guess I could have screamed out right then and I didn't. Maybe I waited for her to come get me. I had no idea, not whatsoever. I never saw him get out of bed. I'm a deep sleeper. Once I go to sleep, I go to sleep, and he knew that. And of course, I went to sleep with a clear conscience. I just can't believe that she would never go looking for him in the middle of the night. That's what I don't understand. When I was 16, I, I couldn't take it. So I told her I wanted him gone. I guess the girls wanted to press charges and uh, I just wanted help. I wanted counseling for, as a family. My stepfather was arrested. He spent two weeks or so in jail and um, was ordered out of the house for several months, then was allowed to come home after that. A lot of people say, oh, just hang him by his throat and kill him, and that's the end of that, you know? And I, I don't think we should just discard people, you know, and he was sorry. I mean, he, he was sorry. He kept saying, I'm sorry. I didn't understand why my mother would stay with a man that would hurt her children that way, especially now that I have a son. What can I do? I can't change the past. I haven't, I haven't hurt her. I've never done anything to really hurt her, except, you know, this decision. Pam, where are you now? Wh where has this left you today? Angry. Angry in what way? I don't know. Just, just being around her makes me angry. Being around your mother makes you angry? And you're angry at your mother for what? You wanted what from her at the time? I wanted her to make the right decision as a mother, not as his wife, what was best. You wanted her to save you? Yeah. You wanted her to come for you and save you. Mm -hmm. and she or at least protect. It. Yeah, or at protect. least protect you. I felt you. like after that, our goal was to keep our family together because that's what they wanted, not necessarily what I wanted or I don't know about my siblings. Do you feel like she chose him over you? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, so, Mom, uh, you, you've apologized, right? Many yeah. times. So why are you here? Why did you agree to come here today and, and sit with her? I'm actually the one that wrote the letter. I know. Because I, I'm at a point right now where I feel when I, I'm with Pamela that she almost abuses me now. I can't do anything. No matter what I do, it's wrong. And I, you know, I just, I'm tired of walking on eggs. I know I made a poor decision with the knowledge I had at the time. When she told me 
I never doubted. I never said it's your fault or I don't believe you. I went for help right away. What happened is, instead of I thought we were going to get help as a family, it became a legal matter. He went to jail. I had a nine-year-old son at the time, who, who it's his father, and you know it was just a lot of stuff. Much more. It's a, you know, I I still <clears throat> made the wrong decision. I'm not saying I made the right decision. I'm telling you, I think being a mother mm -hmm. uh, is an awesome responsibility. I think it's an awesome responsibility. And Pam keeps asking a question, and I'll tell you, 80% mm -hmm. of all questions are statements in disguise. Yeah. They're not really questions. Mm -hmm. And she keeps saying, how could you mm -hmm. have not protected me? How could you have not? I mean, this went on for eight years in your home, right? Nobody believes that someone could not know. Um, he knew how I felt when he used to horseplay with the girls on the floor. I, you know, if he tickled them a little in the wrong way, I get very upset. So I never see people don't believe it, but I swear to, I swear on my father's grave, I never knew. And I am a deep sleeper. Once I go to sleep at night, I am, and I've never, I never missed him out of the bed. So and you understand, she has a real hard time with that, right? I know she does. You know she has a hard know, time can, with it. I, why wouldn't I save them? Why wouldn't I save them? They're it, my daughters. <clears throat> the minute I found out, I went for help. I never said, no, it's not true. It, it was like a lightning bolt. And I, 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 it, was, it was an answer to, you know, in a household, sometimes you don't feel like all the pieces are in place, but you're not quite <coughs> sure what it is. But I never expected it to be that. She feels betrayed because of the failure to protect, right? That you didn't see it, that you didn't know. Right. Because she's right. saying, all right, you either knew or you should have known. Well, I mean, that's her, right. that's her I story. I should have known. That's right. That's, Is that what I you're should, saying, Pam? I should have known. Okay. Right. And then secondly. Dad, I bring them once you knew there was a responsibility. And then secondly, mm -hmm. after it happens and you know, you let the predator back in the home. You brought him back in the home after being out a short period of time. Right. And I mean, Pam, how do you feel about that? How did you feel about six months after this had happened, and had, had broken, you're sitting at the table passing the potatoes to this guy? I mean, how do you feel about that? I did it for them. That's what they wanted. So I just didn't, I already let the cat out of the bag. I wasn't gonna create any more problems. I just shut up and went along with it. Well, I, never I know. She said it wasn't what I wanted. She just assumed that it was what I did want because that, that's just the way it was. I know you have a lot more to say. We're going to take a break and come back and let you say it. We are talking to daughters who feel betrayed by their mothers. Pam has just told us that she is having a difficult time forgiving her mother for letting her stepfather back into their home. Uh, he is the man who molested Pam starting at the age of four. And I know that there are a lot of you out there right now with four-year-olds um, who know what that means. You look at an innocent four-year-old. And she, did she tell you at the time that it had been going on since she was four? She, all she said was, Mom, don't you know that he's been molesting, uh, abusing uh, I mean, when you let him back in the home, you were aware of your daughter at four years oh, old, yeah. Oh, yeah. and that that had oh, yes. been going on oh, yes. since oh, yes. she was four oh, yeah. years old. Oh, yes. When you went to the police, what did you tell the girls to say? Did you tell the girls to tell the truth, or did oh, you yeah. tell the girls oh, to yeah. put a lid on it? Oh no, no, they they took statements from the girls. They went to the police station and told. Gave, they gave their. They said whatever they wanted. But is it your recollection that she wanted you to tell the truth? I heard at you first. I'm sorry? At first. What do you mean at first? We well, went, we went to the police station and gave statements. Then didn't we go back and try to recant it? No. No. Did you? You went back to recant your story? You wanted us to change the story because she got scared. Yeah. You got and this is your scared. sister Jody, right? Yes, yeah, Jody. Okay, Jody, go ahead. Say what you're saying. Um, I think I that my so. mother was afraid at the time. I do recall, Ma, that you did yes. try to recant the story because yes. you wanted him out, and I think it was more for financial reasons because she was dependent on this man to take care of us financially. Okay, can I jump in here? Thank you mm -hmm. for that, Jody. But I, I'm going to tell you, I know where what you're saying. I, I hear your recollection. I hear yours. 
And I'm telling you, if this deal's going to get right, you've got to get real to heal. What happens in so many of these things is they're so scary and they're so distasteful, people want to push it out of their mind. They want to pretend it didn't happen. Let's not talk about this. Let's push that aside. And I can tell you, if you felt at the time that she should have protected you, if you felt at the time that you lost the election between you and bringing him back in the home, then what she's telling you that I don't think you're hearing is you were, unav you were unavailable emotionally then and you're unavailable emotionally now. Because she's saying, you need to hear me. Right, and, and you are here. You are here. And it took courage to write that letter and be here. And now it's time to take the next step because you're saying she needs help. Well, you've led her to getting it, but you got to get real. And she's telling you, you keep giving me this blank stare like, get over it. It's okay. No, it's I in don't, the past. No, I don't That's what that. she's hearing. And may I say this? May I say this? Because you handled it, and I know you all haven't spoken for four months because you two think that she should move on and get on with her life. Everybody handles it differently. I, I know that. Everybody hand, handles it differently. Some people are destroyed by it and right. think about it for the rest of their lives, and other people can get up and go on and, right. you know, become, as I have, overachievers and mm -hmm. work and work and work to, over, to compensate for. Everybody handles it differently, and you have to you know, be grateful for the way you've been able to handle it and respect somebody else's uh, way that they choose to deal with it. Well, is that, that not true? That, that is exactly different. right. So and you can't say, why don't you be like her and get and, on and, you over know, people it? People say, time heals all wounds. Let me tell you, time heals nothing. You can do the wrong thing for 10 years, and it doesn't equal the right thing for one day. Mm. And, and the fact Ooh, that... Ooh, that's good, Phil! <laughs> Well, you know it's true. Write and that, that down for me, Dean. I want to remember that. That's but you good. know it's true, and that's what you're saying. If you're not heard, then you don't get what the goal is here. And the goal here is to get emotional closure. Okay. How does she do that now? Well, she does it by replacing anger with pain, anger with feeling. Have you been able to say all the things that you want to say to her? Have you been able to say out loud to her, express the pain, the hurt, the shame. We're going to take a break and let you come back and think about that. And you can choose to leave it in or not leave it in. I think you should get it out. You should say everything you want to say. And if, then if you don't want it on television, we don't have to put it on television, OK? But at least do that for yourself. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. I was expressing before the commercial break that I think you should have an opportunity to say exactly what you feel so that you don't go through your life snipping and picking and, and, and holding on to anger that really isn't anger at all. It's deep pain. And you need to let that out. And Phil's going to help you. Let's do it. <laughs> OK. Let me tell you what I want you to do. I want you two to turn your chairs facing each other. And I'll, I'll help you do it right here. You can. You can. You, you, you can do that, Pam, because you've lived with it for... Yeah, I still feel like I don't want to hurt her. But you feel like you don't want to hurt her, so you would rather turn the hurt in on yourself? Okay. Okay. Phil, she said she do, feels like she doesn't want to Real hurt close. her. I understand. Real close. Okay. My question to you is, what are you willing to do to help her? What are you willing to do as her mother? Is there any limit to what you'll do at Whatever this point? she asks. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what, what to do. If you had a child, if you had a child that was lost, alone, mm -hmm. and cold in the dark, mm -hmm. how long would you look for her? Forever. You wouldn't quit until you found her, would you? Right. You'd say, I'm coming for you. Right. And I'll never quit until I got you back. Right. right. And right. that's where you are right now, because you know you've, there, there's never been a more lost soul. Oh, I know that. I know that. And she's one, you know, you didn't come for her when she was four and five and six. Right. When she laid there under him screaming silently, wishing you would come for her. Mm -hmm. And she's in the same place right now. You never stop being a mother. Right. And Pam, look at your mother. And I want you to replace the anger with your feelings and your pain. Don't worry about hurting your mother. She's stronger than you think. 
Tell your mother what you need. Tell her how you hurt so she can feel it for you. Not to worry about your husband, to worry about me. Go on. Go on. Your husband's always starting first. Okay. But I need you too. Okay. Go on. Tell her what you need. I need a grandmother for my baby. Thank you. I need you to accept me for how I am. I'm not her. I love Jody. I'm not her. I want you to see that. Then tell her that you're worth it. Don't hide from her. Look her in the eye. Look her in the eye. It's hard for you to tell her you're worth what she has to give, isn't it? Isn't it, Pam? Because that was taken away from you. And you tell her why Just she's worth it. Just know that I'm here. I know no, you I'm are. Me. I'm very aware you're here. You tell her you why she's worth it. You have three kids. I know. I know. Not two. I know. I know. I know. Lucy? I know doesn't get it, lady. Look her in the eye. I know 400 times doesn't get it. I do know. I do know. Well, you tell her what you know then. Don't just say, I know, and shake your head. This is your daughter. She is reaching out and crying for you, and it's your time to reach out and grab a hold of her. I want a relationship with you. I want to be a grandmother to the baby. But every time I'm with you, it's you don't tell me. You always say, I, there's so much I want to say, but you never say it. We never it. have time. Mm. It's always a rush. We, we get together because of a, a party or mm -hmm. an occasion. We don't live near each other. I know. <sighs> well, I said. There's uh, no time for that. Yeah. Well, we'll make time. We'll just make okay. time. OK. OK, we'll make time. When? You let me know. Tell her but why. But you can never come. Or you tell can. her yes, I why. Can. Tell her why you will make the time. I will make the time because I want you to be happy. And I want to help you get to wherever place will make you happy. Tell her Do how, can <clears throat> I hear this? I think we all want to hear this. We want to hear and feel how badly you felt that you made the wrong decision. Because I swear, I don't. I hear you say, "I apologize." I've said it. I'm sorry. I did it, but I don't. I don't feel, and I know she doesn't. I don't feel that you really know. You made the wrong decision. I know I did. And what I know that I has, did. And what that has done to to you, I making know. that wrong decision. I know. I know. Why did you make that decision? I did what I did at the time with what I had to. I, okay, I, I felt Stop. all alone. Stop. Don't talk to her. Talk right. to Pam. And, and I know uh -huh. there may be one person in this whole building that knows how bad you hurt in your heart about that. And that's me, because I see it in your eyes. Tell her so she knows you get it. Because I'll guarantee you, she's sitting there thinking now, you don't get it, right. you haven't ever got it. Right. You make her know, I, I get know. it. Pam, I get what happened. Oh, I get it. Tell her. I get it. What I did is I took a situation that it's the worst possible situation, and I compounded it. I made it worse. I, I made you guys suffer for more years than you should have. You had already suffered. I made you suffer more years. I made me suffer more years, and I have to live with that every day. Oh, and I look at you, and, and I see you with the baby. I just want to hug you and hug the baby and just laugh and, and joke and, and have a good time and cook dinner. And... But there's Why a Why did you wall. choose him over your daughters? Why did you choose him over she your daughters? She feels. <laughs> see, that's, it's, it, you feel like you choose. What I chose was to keep, when HRS came into the picture, they said this family can work it out because he got six years probation, six years counseling. And I knew that he had been abused <clears throat> as a child. He had a lot of issues. And, he, and the girl said, he has stopped abusing me. Okay. okay. Let, me, let me help you here. Uh, let, okay. me, let, me, let, me, let me help you here. I understand what you're trying to say, 
But look at her. Look at her and hear what I'm saying. Because the deal here is that you're saying, I didn't want to throw a person away. You don't just throw people away. I wanted to do this, I wanted to do that. And he got counseling and all of this, that, and the other. But you know what didn't happen? In the time he was gone, not one damn thing was done to see whether or not these girls could handle bringing that predator back in and sitting across the dinner table from him. He went to court, he got treated, you went and talked to him, you did all of that stuff, and they sat there having to deal with it. And let me tell you, you don't, look at her, you Wait. don't fix eight years in six months. I don't care what right. you did in you're that right. time. You're right, you're right. And they were put right back in right. the crosshairs right. again. We did go for counseling. We went to the psychiatrist or psychologist for, and it, it was, a, it cost $5,000 to go to him. I mean, that's how long we went, week after <clears throat> week. And he, um, okay, look I, don't, at I don't even remember you what know he what she wants to, us to about. know? The Do you question remember how you're much not it costs? Hearing. Yeah, I remember how much it cost. Yeah, because I had to pay for the The question you're thing. not hearing. Yeah. The question you are not hearing right. is she saying, how could you bring him back in and not talk to us about it? How could you not know that after he had been in our beds for eight years, we don't want him back, not now, not never, do we want him back in that house? Yeah. That's what she wants to know. I don't know. I don't know. Bad decision. Bad decision. Then own the bad know. decision. It own it and say, I, I was know. wrong. It was a bad know. decision, and I, I want to heal it from this point forward. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I made, a, I, I made a decision with the information I had at the time. Jody wants to say something. What did you want to say? My, I want you to talk, not logically like you I always know. do about I situations know. or going here or doing this or doing that, but from your heart. I know. And I know. I don't know. Maybe it's a place I have to reach. She yeah. has a wall. She has a yeah. wall. Yeah. You, Maybe I do. I'm telling you, the things I didn't hear that Jody's telling you when you said, when I said, tell her why she's worth it, mm -hmm. I didn't hear you say, because you are my precious child and I love you. <laughs> and if you love her and if you care about her, then you tell her from your heart now and you make her believe it. When, when you were born, I thought you were the most precious, five little five pounds. I, I, I'll never forget it. Nobody would hold you but me. And I really love you as much as Jody. You think I love Jody more. As I, I keep telling you, it's like I don't love my right arm better than my left arm. I love both of you. you I love Scott. You are so in your head. Look her in the eye. I am. Look your daughter in the eye. It's she not going to happen today, she, Phil. Give me a minute. She is dying in front of you. It's not going to happen. This girl, this, this girl is dying in front of you here. Mm -hmm. She is screaming for your help. And I want you to tell her from your heart, I know I am so sorry that I made those mistakes and I will get real and make it up to you. Tell her she is dreaming for you. You weren't there then, be there now. What can I do? You tell me. No, no, she's not gonna tell you, you tell know. her. I don't know what to do. Okay, I don't know what good. to Keep do. Talking. I don't know what to do. I, 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 I don't know what to do. I, I don't, I'm, that says about, about as honest, I don't know. I don't know. I, I am this confused person walking around trying to make everything better, and mm -hmm. I need your help. That's good. All right, I'm give it to her right to now. trust her. Uh, tell her what you need, and then we're gonna stop. Just tell her right now. T she said, tell me what you need. She can't Just read your mind. Just be my tell mom, what, what that means. Just love me unconditionally, and... Just listen to me. Validate what I say. Okay, I think I got it here. I think I got it. I think, Phil, and I, I really respect you because for coming on and trying to do this because you speak for millions of other people. But you are going to have to do some work with yourself. I know. Because there's a huge wall there, and I just, bing, 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 went off to me. You would have to have a wall. 
that whole wall, that whole shell or whatever you went into to bring him back into the house mm -hmm. and allow this to try to, th this big facade to continue mm -hmm. oh, yeah. is the same thing that won't let you break through here with, with your daughter. Oh. So that's what she, you know, I'm no psychiatrist. I don't have any of the training that he does. Common sense tells me the same thing that let you do that. that. I don't know. How do you do well, it? I'll tell I don't you know. how you do it. All right. I'll, I'll tell you how you do it. Number one is you decide, I'm going to do this until. I'm not going to do it for a week. I'm not going to do it for 10 days. I'm going to do it until I yeah. get it right. And I'll promise you, if you will go home and look at this tape a hundred times and look at the difference mm -hmm. in her mm -hmm. and her emotional heart approach to this mm -hmm. and your protected head approach to this, yeah. You will see right. and feel the difference. You're right. You're right. And I know what's in your heart, yeah. and it will come through. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for trying. A mother remembers next how she chose cocaine over her daughter. We'll be back. Stacey wrote to Dr. Phil because she cannot get over the bitterness and resentment she feels towards her mom. They've been watching from the green room. So any of this feel familiar? After years of being raised by an alcoholic and drug-dealing mother, it all came to a head when the police raided their home when Stacy was just 16. Take a look. I feel as though during my childhood, I didn't have a mother. My mother was a drug addict. I watched her do almost every kind of drug that there is on a daily basis. The first memory I have of my mother passing out is at the age of seven. When I was 16, my home was raided by police officers doing a drug bust. I missed the safety and security of knowing that my mother was always there for me. I felt like I wasn't important enough for her to be a real mom to me, and it hurt. My mother was very verbally abusive. She could cut you in two with her tongue. That still is a fear that I have today. I hate to make my mother angry. My mother is now clean and sober and has been for the past 14 years. And she apologizes over and over again to me. Her apologies don't make the pain go away. If it wasn't for my eight-year-old daughter, I don't feel that we would even have a relationship today. What do you want? I want us to have a relationship. I want, <clears throat> I want to be forgiven on a daily basis for, I mean, I mean, I want my daughter to be happy and whole. Why don't they do this to each other? All right, let's turn our chairs okay. together. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And guys, you know, what this is about. It's about being real. And Susan, what I'm going to say to you is there were a lot of years when she was a child that you just weren't there because you were in a drug and alcohol haze. Absolutely. And so your time to be a mother may just be starting right now because it was you weren't there then. Tell her what you want. Tell her what you really I, want. I want you to understand my anger. I want you to understand my feelings of betrayal. I don't want you to immediately jump on the defensive. I want you to hear me out, and I want you to try to understand where I'm coming from, even if it seems like that I'm attacking you. I want you to really understand how bad it hurt me to live the way that we lived, um, to not have you come home and save me when the police raided our house. I mean, that, I mean, you were on the phone, and I told you that they were there, and that they, you know, were holding guns on me. And you didn't, you stayed away. You know, you left me to watch them tear the house apart and take Daddy to jail, and then left me to go with a friend, you know? I. I needed you to come home and be my mom and, you know, protect me. 
You know, and I need you to let me say those things without you yelling and screaming at me and telling me I'm crazy and I need help and, you know, I need to get over it. And, you know, I'm trying to get over it, but I want us to work together, you know, for an understanding and a common ground and an acceptance. So tell her what you want, Susan. I want us to be honest with one another. Um, when I got sober, it was the first time in my life that I accepted responsibility for my stuff. I had always blamed others for everything. And I see you doing that a lot, and it scares me because I know what that feeling is. Uh, blaming others is a dead end road. You know, honey, I know I hurt you. You know, I know, I know I did. You know, I was never present. Not really. You know, I did functions and that sort of thing, but I wasn't present. I was drugged out and drunk, you know. But 14 years later, I'm not drinking and I'm not drugging. And on a daily basis, I'm trying to be a better mother. I get to be a grandmother. You gave me Hannah. And I'm able to give her that love that I wasn't able to give to you. I mean, I loved you, you know, but I was a drunk. You know, but I'm present for Hannah and I'm present for you today. I'm proud of you. I love you. I think you're gorgeous. You're smart. You're... Look at you. Look at you. I want you to love you, honey. I didn't love me. And it hurts me because I see you not loving you. And that's a pain that, you know, I was taught in, in my recovery that if I'm not willing to let go of my past, my past will become my future. And that doesn't mean that we say it doesn't matter and that we don't work through it, but it means that we own it, we take responsibility for it, and we do whatever it takes to make it right. And that's what I'm here to do with you. I want to make it right. That was wrong. I was sick, you know. I was sick even without drugs and alcohol, Stacy. Tell her what you want from her. I want you to give me a chance. I want you to love me. Are the two of you willing to break the pattern? Because you know what you can do is when you get home, and you get in one of those exchanges and it starts to fragment down into the anger and the blaming and the going back and forth, one or both of you can say, stop. This is exactly the pattern that we talked about with Phil and Oprah, and we can choose to stop it right now. Instead of preaching and yelling and screaming at my daughter, I can teach her to love herself. I can teach her that it was about me. It wasn't about her. Mm -hmm. The reason I didn't come home was not because she wasn't worth saving. It was because I didn't have the courage to see it. I can teach her to feel about herself the way I should have taught her back then. And I'm going to commit to that instead of to fighting and arguing. If you will agree to not fall into that pit and break that pattern, I have every belief in my heart you two are going to make it. Thank you both. Remembering Spirits next. A harsh slap, a violent word can destroy a child's spirit. Uh, people still ask me, what is spirit? Y'all know what it is, right? It's the essence of who you are. It's your joy. It's your happiness. It's really what you bring to the world that gives you your bliss. Sherry Eichhorn knows that all too, all too well because she has done all of those things. Her abuse was at the hands of her mother and now a mother herself, Sherry has found a way to heal her spirit by trying to make peace with the person who caused her the most pain, which you may have to go there. When I was younger, my mother physically and verbally abused me. I was terrified of my mom. I never really knew what would set her off. In fact, one time, she took a pillow and put it over my face, and I really thought she was going to suffocate me. When I divorced Sherry's father, and everything fell on my shoulders, 
that I would come home and I would feel like I didn't have any help. So it would make me mad. Because I was in such a rage, I would pick up anything that was close by, like a belt, a hanger, to spank Sherry with. When my mother physically abused me, it broke my spirit. But when I did finally work up the courage to confront my mother with it, she denied it. So that was really hard. So then I went for three years without talking to my mother. After giving birth to my son, it made me realize that I really needed to do something about the relationship that I had with my mother. I cry because I have such a wonderful husband and a son. But even though you have those things, there is a piece of you that feels lost. And that piece was my mother. You either get it or you don't. The light bulb went off when Phil McGraw said, either you get it or you don't get it. And I finally got it, that it was my responsibility to repair the relationship between me and my mother. I decided through words, through communication, to confront my mother again. The love that I had was totally different towards my mother. It was more forgiving. And then I felt my mom was able to respond to that. By admitting that I abused Sherry, it has lifted my spirit up to a whole new reality of how good life is. And it really makes me sad that I could have ever done anything like that to her. And I want you to know that I love you. The feelings that I had of anger, confusion, and hurt have been replaced by trust, joy, and real love. I haven't talked to Aunt Ginny lately. My mother and I remember our spirits now by doing simple things. <laughs> Having lunch together, we take walks in the park together. These are the things that I felt that I never got to do with my mother when I was growing up as a child. Our spirits are soaring now, both of us, because we have that mother and daughter relationship that I've always wanted to have. Thank you, Sherry and Christine. I just wanted to say that for uh, the mothers and daughters who were courageous enough to, to be on stage today, my heart um, opens up to you for that. Um, at this stage of us doing these shows, we show you people who are as courageous as these mothers and daughters have been for the benefit of you going home or speaking to who you need to speak to, to, to write your own life. Uh, for me, it's not about voyeurism, although you allowed us to look inside your life, but it's about touching your own spirit and being able to, while you can, um, make the connections with the people that you say you love. We'll be right back. Yes. I just want to say that one thing that I noticed between them two is that the mother never apologized to the daughter. That's what I noticed. She never received a heartfelt apology while you were up there. And I've I think that she deserves her that. many times. <laughs> it hasn't worked. It doesn't worked. look like it because you keep making excuses I'm not making it. excuses. Well, that's not gonna happen today. Yeah. That's not, not gonna happen wall, today. That's a, there's that's a wall. Wall. Okay, let me ask you this. Could you feel the difference? Well, you will when you see the tape between this mother and yourself. Yes. Oh, I see it. Uh, it. Yeah. I saw it now. Yeah. <laughs> Speak, you know, we're just trying not I, to bring out the because you could feel I it. I saw it now. Yeah. I saw the sincerity in her. Yeah. That that was so different from mine. You did see that. Oh, of course. The key thing, and then we're gonna go. And I because I love you for being able to stand here and take this. I love you for that. I, I thought really you were going to take <laughs> This is hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's really hard. It's hard to hear this. But what you need to do, what you need to be able to do is exactly what you just said. It's in Phil's book. You have to. You have to be able to name it, and you haven't been willing to name it. I don't know what to name. No, no, no. That's the word. Yes, you do. That's the word. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. 
yeah, you're you do. afraid that it is so ugly and so <coughs> yeah. horrible yeah, you do. that you won't be able to overcome it. Yeah, you do. But that's the exact opposite. You're stuck. You can't overcome it. The thing that, that resonated with me here when you were saying, I want her to be happy, I just want her to be able I to do, do that. Because, like, you're projecting that this whole problem, all of this would go yeah. away yeah, yeah. if she like would just go yeah. on yeah, and get over it. But it really, it never is about the other person. This is about you. This is really about you, and she has her own work to do. This is about you and that wall that allows you to deny and want to live in the rose-colored Mrs. Rose Cleaver world. Right. That's what you need to strip down to. And, and Oprah, when, when you, I mean, let me tell you how to get what you, what you want to get. The way to get what you want to really get is to give what you need to give. That you will get through giving. Right, yeah, and, and it's kind of like if, if, mm -hmm. if I break Oprah's leg, and I say, <clears throat> if I break Oprah's leg I'm and I... I'll kick you in the face. <laughs> yeah. But if I break Oprah's leg and I say I'm sorry, that's fine. I said I'm sorry, but her leg is still broken. Right. It still needs to be dealt with, right. and I still got to go back there and help her. You're right. And that's you're where right. you are. You've said you're sorry. Yeah. Now go fix the broken spirit. Yeah. All right. Help her fix the Thank broken you. spirit. Thank and you. fix yours. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> got to go.